Hey, what's going on? Today I got a special treat for you. We're on location and in today's video, I'm gonna share something that a lot of you have expressed interest in and it's how to take reference photos. I'm gonna give you three simple tips that's gonna make your reference photos better so that way when you come and go to paint them, they're just gonna be so much easier. And I got a special guest today. I've got Anna right here. You might Hello. remember her from our candle video and we got a super duper guest right here. We've got Tucker, big old Tucker. So let's go have some fun and see what kind of photos we can take and what tips I can give you to make your paintings even better. Let's go. What do we say, Anna? I don't know. Cool, good job, Anna. <laughs> good job, Anna. Let's go. So when it comes to taking photos, most people think when you take a great photo, your subject or your element is in the very middle of your photo. And that's generally not always true. You wanna think about the rule of thirds. I'm gonna put a grid right here on screen. And if you can include some of your elements and assets on the left or the right, or in the top or bottom right, kind of off skewing things a little bit, it adds for a more compelling image. So many of you might remember that Anna is also creative and makes lazy turtle candles. So tell us a little bit about lazy turtle candles, Anna. Uh, well, that was good. So let's go back to our video. One of the best things you can do when taking reference photos for your painting is learn to do bracket exposures, which means you expose on the higher end and lower end, as well as just a normal exposure. And what this allows you to do, see more information in your highlights and more information within your shadows. So that way you can decide what you wanna keep or what you wanna make pure black or pure white. Now, I actually prefer to do this in a program like Photoshop, but any, any photo editing software will pretty much work. Just move your highlights up and your shadows down and play around with the levels, and you can see what you wanna make pure white or pure black or concentrate and add a little bit of extra detail, but this is one of the best tips I could give you for reference photos. All right, Anna, I was joking. Tell us a little about lazy turtle candles. Okay, so let's get back to the video again. Don't <laughs> worry. Thank you. Well, I gotta do this joke two more times. Okay, it's time to set up the drone. Let's get some aerial shots. Someone wants to go play. All right, Anna, how quick do you think we'll get kicked off the beach when we take Tucker onto the beach? He's such a good boy. I think at least 10 minutes. I give it 10 seconds. Let's find out. <laughs> Tucker, oh, look at that. Oh, now you want to go play? Now you want to go play? Now you want to go play? Oh, okay. Tucker's in, let's go on the beach. So one thing to think about when you're taking reference photos is just don't take the photo of what you think is gonna comprise a good image. Do some close-up photos, change your perspective, go higher, go lower, punch in, punch out, because you may need that for reference for 
details, or you might discover a new angle that leads to an awesome image and painting. This was a fun adventure and there's a lot of tips in here that you can use for your paintings, but let's give Anna one more chance about her candles. Anna? All right. All right, we'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and peace. All right, well, did you have fun today? I did, did you? I did. Good. All right, let's give Anna the last word. Tell us about your candles. All right, so I make small batch soy candles and if you're interested, find the link to my Etsy store below. All Bye. right, that was good. And I think we should give Tucker actually the last word. Tucker, what do you have to say? What do you have to say, buddy? Subscribe to Wild Creates Roar. Was that a good dog impression? Excellent. Yes, I thought so too. Tucker says bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>